So every member asking questions will address you as nominee, and that's what you are before us. So we'll start in earnest uh, by asking you to tell us your name, your educational background, your work experience, and your key competences that make you suitable for appointment as cabinet secretary. You have under five minutes to do that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First and foremost, it is indeed a great honor to be in this house. Mr. Speaker, even though I must, I must confess that I, I was used so much being on the other side when I was a member of parliament with you in the third parliament, but Mr. Speaker, I want to begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the favor upon me and also thank His Excellency the President, Dr. William Ruto, for nominating me for the position of Cabinet Secretary, Mining, Blue Economy, and Maritime Affairs. Mr. Speaker, my name is Hassan Ali Joho. I was born and raised in Mombasa. I went uh, to Tomboya Primary School in Mombasa, and later Serani Secondary School in Mombasa. So Mr. Speaker, I have a bit of a, a different approach on how I want to present my introduction because I started work and then education came, further education came later. So after I finished secondary school, I ventured into business, entrepreneurship. I set up a clearing and forwarding company in Mombasa, then later diversified to opportunities in fintech, a bit of real estate, and uh, largely logistics. Mr. Speaker, that takes about up to 2004, where I started uh, my grassroots engagement. I ran in a by-election that was not, not very successful, but taught me many lessons. I became the chairman of uh, LDP in Kisauni constituency. Then in 2006, I embarked on a journey to acquire my first degree. So in 2006, I did uh, a bridging course to enable me to join university teachings. I did a diploma in 2007 and eventually graduated from Kampala University in 2013. Thereafter, Mr. Speaker, I did another degree from Gretzer University. And then I enrolled myself Grace University is in Thika, mm -hmm. in Kiambu County. Thereafter, I enrolled in Harvard Kennedy School of Government for a program known as leadership, Public Leadership Credentials, which is basically a pathway to attain mid-career master's uh, degree on public administration. Mr. Speaker, I am the pioneer governor of Mombasa. I got elected in 2013. But before that, I was a, a member of parliament for Kisauni, the 10th parliament, where I served in different committees. Um, I served in the Committee of Foreign Relations, Defense and Foreign Relations, which I was a vice chairman, and several others. Uh, I served as an assistant minister, minister for transport um, uh, during the Kibaki administration. I was governor for one term and another. So I served my two terms as governor of Mombasa, where I must say I drew a lot of experience uh, in matters governance and uh, transformational ways of doing business in government, Mr. Speaker, and uh, the record speaks for itself of what I've, 
I was able to achieve in Mombasa. Uh, in matters health, in matters basic infrastructure, in matters early, early childhood, and uh, obviously lots of uh, social programs that would cushion vulnerable families uh, from uh, the day-to-day -day challenges of our lives. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll now invite the debut speaker to be the first to ask you a question. And like I said, answers must be concise, precise, and to the point. Uh, Honorable Joho, the nominee before us, uh, you're nominated to be the Minister or the Cabinet Secretary for Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs. And what Kenyans would like to know is that what do you see as the most pressing issues facing the Ministry of Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs that ought, ought to be addressed immediately? And so if Parliament approves you, how do you plan to tackle the issues considering the fact that the blue economy, if properly, properly used, has the potential to, it's been said, has the potential to inject up to $4.8 billion into Kenya's economy and create over 50,000 jobs. So let's get your vision of what you do if approved by this house. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I must say that uh, after I was nominated by the president, I took a little bit more time to do some research. And I want to state before this honorable committee how I see mining and blue economy and even maritime affairs probably that should be our focus. It is actually, it actually should be our new economic frontier. Mr. Speaker, I saw, for example, that uh, the mining industry contributes slightly under 1% of our GDP. So that led me to do some quick research that leads me to tell you what I think we should do. Mr. Speaker, we have to find, first of all, ways to generate confidence to investors and the Kenyan people. Mr. Speaker, I want, if you nominate me, if you approve me, I want to be a CS that listens. I want to listen. And I have learned that uh, if, if, if you take time and li listen to stakeholders. There's a lot of information and data that will enable you to make the right policy decisions, create legal frameworks that are responsive to the demands of the moment and attractive to investment. So what will I do first? Listen. Two, involve stakeholders. Three, do an audit of our HR capacity, we do our technological capacity audit, and we look at our legal frameworks and our policies. Are they attractive to investment? And if they are not, we, I must embark quickly on, uh, on coming up with the proposals and policies that do respond. Because, Mr. Speaker, there is absolutely no way that our neighboring countries have surpassed by far the 10% mark on GDP contribution. Yet there is a lot of, I want to call it speculation for now, because I don't have the data, neither do I have the real information of the kind of geological minerals that this country have. And I'm looking forward, if, uh, if I get approved, to get the real data. So there are certain quick things that we must do to ensure that Kenya becomes an attractive point of investment, particularly in the area of mining, blue economy, and maritime affairs, Mr. Speaker. I thank you. Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. CS nominee, uh, let me begin by 
asking from your academic credentials that uh, clearly looking at them uh, bottom up. And having said how you began your journey for uh, getting your degrees all the way to Harvard uh, Kennedy, it's Kennedy what Kennedy School of Government. School of Government. What would you tell young Kenyans who may have started off life like you in terms of being able to pursue academic credentials later in life? That would be one. Two, you come from a region where the blue economy, as you say, holds a very huge potential to create employment. And I'm sure probably from your research you may have known that there have been efforts by the government uh, since 2015, 2016, to try and get Kenyans to work in the Caribbean, but have had problems uh, accessing visas to travel through the US. What will you do as cabinet secretary to ensure, one, that we are able to train as many young people to work in the maritime industry? Because there's very, a very huge potential, as you say, uh, to create jobs in that industry. What will you do to help Kenyans, one, train, two, access jobs uh, even outside the country? Uh, the other question would relate to the mining docket. There is a lot of unregulated and unlicensed and uh, what would uh, be tantamount to illegal mining around the country. What will you do as CS to ensure, one, that uh, any player who is uh, in the mining industry in Kenya is licensed and regulated? And that uh, also involves things like quarries. You've seen the recent cases uh, in Nairobi, in uh, quarry here in Mbakasi, where abandoned quarries are left unfilled. They have now become uh, graveyards for criminals. They are dump sites. What will you do to make sure that uh, Anybody who is involved, even in quarrying, is uh, one taking care of the environment, uh, especially in getting to refill many of these quarries, and that that industry is well regulated, and uh, anybody and everybody engaged in it is licensed. Nomini. Mr. Speaker, I would have I would have been completely surprised if uh, I was not asked the question of education. Jeanette? Okay. Let me add something. We can, no, go on and ask a question. Oh, okay. Take those two. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask the nominee two questions. The first one, Mr. Speaker, just to, to add to what the majority leaders ask, this issue of the education background. Mr. Speaker, I think uh, the nominee needs to he has alluded to that now he's in the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. We want to ask him to clear this matter because this matter, it, is, it comes up during elections and goes down after elections. It comes up during elections, goes away after elections, you win the election. We want you to... We want to say